This is a quick overview of WorldGen, which is my software for generating star systems and planetary maps. It's based on Traveller um, in terms of the type of information it will generate about worlds, but um, unlike Traveller, it will generate an entire star system um, with of many worlds, many moons, rather than just a concentrating on a single main world. Um, what we have here is a small part of charted space. Um, this is actually sectors which are being used in my own traveller campaign at the moment. And we can see many many of the sectors are unmapped and the ones with dots in are showing where our mapped star systems are. In total in the current database we have 930 named sectors, uh, most of which are unmapped. Uh, we have just over 6,000 different star systems consisting of 52,000 planets and over 100,000 moons. Total population of these worlds is 4.3 trillion. So we can generate star systems in one of two ways. Uh, we can either do it completely randomly based on a stellar density map so in the background there's this grayscale image and we can use this to say okay if we wanted to generate sector 518 over here it would generate a low density of star systems in the dark areas and a high density in the lighter areas so as you can see where we've done some random generation of star systems it's following the contours of the great great rift Alternatively, if we have existing uh, traveller data similar to this, um, the old style UWP data, um, it can take a one, one line description of each star system and then generate something based on that, reading in the number of stars and the UWP data for the individual main world. So we can take a look at that, for example, by going to the Trojan Reach, and this generates just a list of stars. We don't have anything like Traveller Map, uh, at least anymore. Um, originally, I had something very similar to Traveller Map, um, but it got lost in one of the many rewrites which the system's undergone over the last 20 years. And given how good Traveller Map is, it's not something I feel a need to rewrite at the moment. So we're just keeping to an overview of sectors and worrying about mapping the actual individual star systems themselves. So we have a list of the star systems and we can choose Darrow. And this will take us to a map of the, of the planets and the star. So this is a overview map. Um, in fact, we can zoom out um, to take a look at the Oort cloud. Um, there is an Oort cloud here, and we can see from the scale down the bottom that it's about 10,000 AU in radius. And the main part of the star system is the tiny little dot in the center. We start zooming in. We can see the outer system. We've got some, we have a Kuiper belt um, with various planetoids in it. We have some other planet types. So Gelidian is a type of world which is rocky icy world saturnian is a type of gas giant so these labels basically give you the position in in the system so this is world number eight at distance of 56 au and we've got a gas giant here at position five at 13 au and different distances around here the software actually keeps track of the current date so as the date changes, planets will move around in their orbits. Um, this includes asteroids displayed in the asteroid belts and the planetoids and moons and things like that. So we can zoom into zoom in closer. Uh, we can see uh, these axes here are showing the circumstellar habitable zones. So these blue colours are very cold, and then we've got a little touch of green around here, which is the Goldilocks zone. And as it goes to red, it's less less habitable, uh, much much too warm. 
uh, we could zoom in uh, in close and we can see we've got some type of Aryan world here which is Mars like out at uh, almost 260 million kilometers and we've got a Halcyonic world um, which is a large terrestrial world with a helium atmosphere in right right in at the edge of the yellow zone so it's a bit too hot for life uh, as far as the stellar map is concerned we can show the jump mask of the star um, so we can see that you can't jump into or out of the star within this area but this world out here which is the main world um, is outside the jump mask uh, we can also show jump shadows so if we were jumping from somewhere down in this direction so the two two parsecs to the right and two parts parsecs down uh, we could see that we wouldn't actually even though world number two is outside of the stars ju jump mask it's within its jump shadow and if we zoom out a bit we can see the gas giants are also casting their own shadows and the smaller worlds are as well but they generally don't have make too much difference and if you wanted to track the current time in this um, it could make for some sort of interesting navigation decisions because worlds make worlds sort of go in and out of the jump shadows as time goes on if we go back in we've also got a radar option <coughs> which shows the zone uh, which is monitored by the main world. Um, there's no reason mod if you've got multiple star systems in, in a system, uh, so star ports in a system, um, each one will have its own radar area. And the extent of that, <coughs> of that area depends on the type of star port, uh, the technology level, whether there's a military base or scout base, and that, sort of, that sort of thing. So, <coughs> we can go take a look at the planets themselves. So in this case, the innermost planet is this Helian world. Um, the world types are based on the planetary classification list. It isn't something I came up with, it's just something I've been making heavy use of. Uh, there's a number of science fiction settings out there, and if I'd suggest doing a web search if you want to find out more information on the planetary classification list. Um, so its habitability is something I came up with as a simple way of sort of saying how friendly is this place. The type 1 worlds are Earth-like, uh, type 2 are moderately unpleasant, type 3 require a breathing mask, type 4 require a vac suit and 5 and 6 require more sturdy vac suits. Um, this world has a year length of 283 days. It's got a 15,000 kilometer radius, um, so almost, well, bigger, more than twice the size of Earth. Day length, infinite. It's uh, tidally locked. Um, we've got the gravity here, which is about 2.6 g. Um, we've also got the escape velocity, and we can see that the atmosphere is 20 to 5 times the pressure of Earth. At Earth's atmosphere and it's made up of inert gases. Temperature is a toasty 381 degrees C on the night side and it sort of cools down to 54 degrees C on the night side. And we have a description which is based off templates but there's random generation in there um, and it yeah, basically tells us it's in a tight solar orbit and it's tidally locked and it has a thick helium atmosphere. The map, maps are randomly generated. Um, we can see it's at sort of the day side of it is rather warm, covered in a posh sort of reddish surface and we can stretch that out to give a more sort of rectangular map if we want that or we can have take a look at the world globe and if we let it it will fill, fill in um, the atmosphere as well so we can see 
at what this world looks like from space is basically just a bluish world shrouded in atmosphere but we can zoom in take a look and rot rotate the world map and there's a sort of a bit of bump mapping on that but it's a simplistic map um, basically designed to allow the map and the text descriptions to match up so if you have a world with an equatorial ocean then the map will show that and the text can talk about that and things like that so um, the main world here is Eurian which is very like Mars um, we can see it's a type 3 world requires a breathing mask and if we take a look at the description it will talk about that yeah um, you can walk around on the surface without a pressure suit um, but there's no oxygen so you, you need a breathing mask uh, we've got 45 percent standard carbon dioxide its average temperature negative 26 degrees celsius population 2000 it's a feudal technocracy uh, law level 6 d-class starport tech level 5 um, and we can take a look at <coughs> that world map there it's a sort of reddish mars like world we can also take a look at the moon system and we can go take a look at the moons which are in this case sort of relatively boring Astro captured asteroids the globes of these are not a, a tall globe like they're very irregular rocky shapes we've also got gas giants various types of gas worlds um, if we take a look at the globes we can see that some of them have rings and that will show in the 3d view or we can take a look at the entire moon system to see what moons we have and these are all icy worlds um, relatively blank and featureless though back here we have something which is has a few more a bit more color to it uh, we also have these outer worlds which are small icy things we have a Kuiper belt um, which has its own worldlets and we have the Oort cloud moving out from here we can take a look at a close binary system so this is a system with two stars and if we jump into the inner system we can see that they're actually it's a close binary pair two stars orbiting around each other if we show the stellar mask we can see they overlap if they in a binary system where they're further apart then the stellar masks can be a bit more interesting um, taking a look at the planets uh, we've got a slightly more habitable world here it We've also got, um, also listed down here is a list of resources. I mean, this is part of the trade system, which isn't really implemented yet, but we can see the type of resources which are available naturally on this world. And it will tell us that um, the oceans are full of highly evolved organisms um, and there's huge vertebra vertebrates, which are at the apex aquatic predators, as well as sea dwelling shell creatures. Um, geo the main physical description will say it's geothermally active and there's thermal vents beneath the oceans so there's some sort of these try to be unique though some world types are more have more options than others um, life is described as simple land which means there's some land based life but most of the interesting life is in the ocean um, so we look at some of the out outer systems another example world type is a Vestian world which is somewhat oblate and once again we've got gas giants and another Mars type world this one is 
has no population. Um, finally, let's take a look at a triple star system. So we've got three different star systems here. Um, you can take a look at each star. Each star has its own set, set of planets. And interestingly, if we show the mask, uh, this fact, uh, no, if we make that minus two, I will get this right. Right, you can see that what we have here is a jump shadow coming from one of the stellar companions. So if we go back to the overview, uh, we're on the overview, if we go to the system, we can see this this star out here, its jump shadow is crosses across, almost crosses across this star system. So if you're jumping from over in this direction, then it's possible that this main star might be completely blocked by this one, though it's unlikely because this is a much smaller star. If you had a larger parent star, then it can completely mask what, what one of its companion star systems. And here we have a more terrestrial world uh, with ice caps and an atmosphere. And we have various different world types. And that's a quick view of what WorldGen gives you. Okay, thank you.